Good morning ladies and gentlemen. This is your today's host Harleen Kaur. As we all know that nation comes first whatever comes your way. There is a proverb saying good soldiers are defined by what they endure and not by what they can inflict. This proverb goes rightly with our legendary brigadier Manoranjan Singh sir who has always displayed conspicuous bravery, leadership qualities and rock courage with disregard to personal safety. Hi sir I welcome you once again sharing screen with you fills me with an immense delight so you have always showed leadership qualities that has always proved a benchmark for everyone around you sir you were awarded with veer chakra on 19th october 1987 so could you give us more insights about that operation okay i'll specifically talk about this battle which is known as the battle of kopai north now kopai north was a junction through which one approached the jafna town This Jaffna town was strongly held by the LTT, mm-hmm. and in route was Kopai North. Now Kopai North was actually a citadel of the LTT. It was very strongly held with uh, approximately 250 LTT cadres and commanded by the uh, second in command of uh, Prabhakaran, who was Mahatya. And these cadres had very well fortified this junction with bunker. and uh, made installations and made bunkers even on the rooftops and even on tree tops they had made certain firing um, places so it was on 10th october that we approached this kopai north for its capture and after its capture we were supposed to go into jafna town but as it happened we were held up on uh, 10th october itself we could not proceed because of heavy firing from the ltt we were only armed with 140 men and uh, small arms weapons because in an insurgency you are not supposed to use heavy weapons so that you don't kill or damage any civilian property so we were pitted against a enemy or the ltt who was well armed with and with heavy weapons so this battle in this built up area built up area is means that there were a lot of houses is very difficult because you have to clear each house you have to get into each house kill the cadres capture the weapons and then proceed on to the next lane or the house and capture them so it takes lot of time and we had only gone with our pouch ammunition pouch ammunition means that type of ammunition which is initially required for the battle so this battle ding dong raged for 9 days that is from 10th october to the 19th october and each day we made progress by capturing a certain lane or killing ltt cadres and proceeding ahead now on the 9th on the 8th day in fact we were very short of ammunition and hardly had any ammunition to uh, kill the ltt cadres so it was a state of desperation and uh, the higher headquarters also tried to throw ammunition by the helicopters but it could not succeed so we were you can say in a very dire situation so it was at this time that the higher headquarters thought that they would induct a team a combat team a combat team means uh, three tanks and three icvs icvs means uh, infantry combat vehicles in which the soldiers get into the vehicle and they are protected with the small arms so this team joined me on 18th october and on 18th october we briefed the team and did what we could do so the tanks were to be in the fire support role the infantry that is my 140 boys including me we were to assault this ltt position and the f- tanks were to first fire at their bunkers and destroy as many houses and bunkers where they could locate the ltt and the infantry combat vehicles we were supposed to be inside the infantry combat vehicles and get as close to the ltt bunkers and all and then from there dismount and physically assault the bunkers because we were shy of ammunition so that is what happened i with my troops accordingly mounted in these uh, infantry combat vehicles and then near the objective we dismounted and then with our bayonets we assaulted the ltt positions so the battle raged on from 7 o'clock in the morning till 1:30 at 1:30 we managed to clear the ltt and they all went away and then we started evacuating the wounded and taking stock at as to what was there in the kopai north the kopai north was a training head 
a hub of the LTT and also it had 142 weapons which had been issued at that time. Plus, it was also a signal center of the LTT. So we managed to capture a uh, lot of ammunition, a lot of radio sets and other warlike equipment which also included 1000 kgs of explosive because they used to have the explosive there and make bombs which were used to make IDs that is Im improvised explosive devices which they used to put on the roads and blow up our vehicles and BMP. So that was the Battle of Kopai North. It ended there. Thereafter, it gave a free run to other troops to go to Kopai North. And after that, it was for this action actually for which I was awarded the Veer Chakra. Sir, did you ever fear about your family? Ever? No, at that time actually when you are going in combat, one doesn't fear for the family. That is one. Secondly, our Indian Army really ensures that your family is looked after in whatever condition it is. So, we had left our containment which was in uh, Dhana in uh, Madhya Pradesh, a small town near uh, Saugar. So, all the families were left there and my wife was the head of all the ladies there being the commanding officer's wife. So, she ensured that the families were well looked after. I must also add that in those days that uh, whenever a casualty took place, a fatal casualty, there was no norm that the body bag came back. You had to uh, do the funeral or uh, bury the body, whatever it is, in the battlefield itself. So that was a very challenging. And those were the times when there were no mobile phones. You couldn't ring up your family, landlines, nothing. It was in the later part after uh, about two years that the satellite phones came and we could ring up from the uh, Sri Lanka. So for 15 days willy-nilly after leaving the cantonment, the families there had no information where we have gone, what casualties have taken place. And then ultimately after the battle, I think after two, three days, my wife came to know that these are the casualties. And it was very trying for her to break the news to those who had lost their lives and those who were injured. And those who were injured were more panicky because they uh, the injured were evacuated to various hospitals all over India, some to Pune, depending upon the type of injuries they had, to Delhi all over. So the families had to be informed and their movement from there to that, that particular station hospital had to be done. So it is a lot of tasks which the army officers, uh, ladies perform behind the scenes. Sir, how did your family react whenever they heard about any operation? I think like uh, any other family. Everyone is scared and uh, I had two daughters, they were also scared, not to say that nobody is uh, scared while going into battle and uh, there are some things which happened on that day, so even till that date, whatever food was cooked, the dish that was cooked, my daughters don't consume that dish even today. <laughs> Shukriya, 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 Shukriya.